This morning' message, as in a series of a Christmas message, and in early of December of this month, uh, I share with you f- about the topic on the fatherless generation, and then uh, talk about the uh, the emptiness, and uh, it all kind of uh, correlated or kind of has some connection. Uh, those who are lacking, there was no fatherly figure at their home during childhood formation meaning around six years old until the teenage, teenager's year, if there is no father, daddy is at home and to guide you, to lead you, to take care of you, to speak to you uh, in a way that you are, uh, have the absence of the father, even though that he's around, but he never uh, you know, talk to you. So uh, if you would like to hear that message, you can go on our YouTube and listen to that again. Uh, and then we talk about the emptiness, kind of a symptom that any one of us, sometimes we feel boredom, sometimes we, we don't know what to do in life, disorientation, we just feel of emptiness, even though we have a bit of everything, you know, whether job, good job, good family, or, or even all the things that we are not starving, we have enough food to eat, but we still sometimes uh, feel empty, if, if not all the time. And so this morning, I'd like to uh, share with you on the topic of insecurity. But first, I want to share you this uh, famous uh, verse that probably you see all around the city or online. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, maybe I have it. Okay. Uh, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace among those whom he pleased. Have you heard about this, right? Could be in the song, could be somewhere. Uh, and maybe they, they just stop at, uh, you know, uh, they don't say glory to God, but maybe just, you know, peace. Or everybody expecting peace. Everybody seek peace at this time. Especially in the time of war and uh, uh, rumors of war and all kind of tension, whether military tension. Uh, but I tell you, there will be no peace if there is no security. You know, the reason that you and I are having in a way, a peace of mind we're sitting here because there is security in the sense that we, we trust that building can hold us. We trust the pillar is still working, uh, the aircon working, and the foundation is still intact and so that we have a, some sort of security. So all of you are working for a company. Of course, you got interview, you submit your CV, and, and you want a company that you apply for give you some sense of security as well. Whether it's a package including medical care or insurance, or the end, uh, as the contract said, the end of the month you should receive salary. And then when when this pandemic happened, the pay cut that you know it, people experience from thirty percent to sixty percent to seventy percent to eighty percent are almost losing their job they feel that they don't have enough security. And security in uh, certainly that money can buy some security. Meaning today you can uh, hire a security guard and take care of the building and office and so on. Uh, security on earth is, is, is needed, but who can secure your heart? Who can give you the security of your mind, your heart? Even though today that you buy life insurance, the only thing security that they can promise you is if you die, that amount of money that they collected over the years will multiply and hopefully give to someone that you uh, wrote in the contract to give for. In a way that not secure for you, but secure that they, well, after your death, there will be certain provision, certain amount that can sustain your loved one. And that is the purpose of the life insurance regardless how the sales of life insurance try to tell you, but that is just simply is that. Now, no one can give you the security of the soul. What next? Where, you know, after you die, where are you going? Well, some seek religion. Some seek religion. Some seek a form of the supreme being, a form of God. Some will believe that a piece of rock can provide you security. Some will believe a fire, some will be mountains, some will be river, some will be bank account. But I tell you, the bank account is only a matter of, uh, of a numbers. Whether you have, uh, in, in Vietnam, down probably all of you are millionaires. <laughs> uh, it's just the difference between zeros. Whether you have six zero or nine zero, it's all zero. Just in case you didn't know. 
right? And then, of course, the bitcoins, and then, you know, digital currency, and all of uh, us. A lot of people got rich because of rich coin. I got a, uh, an acquaintance, not a friend, but, you know, who really got rich and became millionaire uh, because of bitcoin. Uh, but that bitcoin doesn't tr does not translate to feel the void and the emptiness in his soul and never guarantee the security that what happened after his death. Christmas, we're not talking about that, but we're talking about the birth of the person that you have shared, that you have heard from sharing about the person named Jesus Christ. Peace is not for sale. If it's for sale, all the billionaires and millionaires and even you can buy it. Because peace is in the person. It's in the relationship. And when you have that relationship, it gives you the security. This is often time when uh, a single boy and a single girl went in the dating. If they don't, they don't know each other, they even though during the dating period, they have no security because the guy maybe date many girls and the girl maybe date many guys. And they always find a means and measure to control by you know, asking where are you last night, all of that. And some of you have been through that and has so and get tired of it because there is the degree of control because there is no trust and there is no security. For those who know uh, God, who know Jesus Christ, and then you look for the person who also knows Jesus Christ, they're always a security and trust. And that is going to be a good relationship. And that was supposed to be for husband and wife, for those who are married. The husband gain a bit of security if they know that their wife is godly and love the Lord. They will never put her eyes on any other men's. And the same if the wife have a security if the husband, knowing her husband, that always that always drink his own well and not looking at the other woman. We talk about the well, the cistern, uh, his own cistern uh, last Sunday. And there is trust and security. Security is in a person and in a relationship. The more you spend time with Jesus, the more secure you feel and you establish a security. Because I tell you, because if, even Christian. That when you have, so you say, oh, yeah, I have peace with Jesus Christ. But you, sometimes you feel insecure inside. will not help you to live this life fully in terms of God's plan for you. And according to psychology, there will be three types of insecurity. I want to share with you type number one. Type number one will be insecure based on recent failure or rejection. All of us... To a certain degree, we all face rejection at some point. For some of you, maybe you were bullied during your uh, childhood or in school. Maybe somebody's teasing you of your nose, of your mouth, of your, the, the way you look, your appearance. All of that gives you some sort of insecurity because that's why you need to, to make it up. That's why you need to, to feel that you have to show uh, uh, people to approve them. There's certain exclusion. When it, it, we all experience that maybe in a classroom. Uh, there will be a group of people who don't play with you and so on. And then you go to work as well. If you're not, uh, you know, meet certain category, people will not invite you to the club. There will be always uh, the exclusive club. Because if you feel like you're being left out in a certain company, or even you go to the, the uh, you know, flying the plane, there will be first class, there will be business class, there will be uh, intimate class, meaning that you sit close together. That's called economy class. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> it's economy class is intimate. I mean, the, the people are distancing themselves. They all just want their private zone. Uh, it's okay. Leave them alone. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, there's a certain, uh, you know, or recent failure. Meaning like, this is in the era of, you know, business startup. You start a few times, then you fail, and then again, and then everybody, young people, everybody say, everybody do startup. I don't want to work for a company, I want to start up. And then you started a small a business, and then fail. You, you feel a degree of rejection uh, from your friends, or the community, or your, your loved one. And then recent failure, that also cause you insecure, that make you feel insecure. Maybe some of the young girls today, 
uh, especially the uh, teenager, the 19, I talk, speaking to you, or even young single one. Because you have the, uh, the so-called the blessing of the internet and that you can see everything around the world in one click. And therefore, also give you a insecurity because why? Because sometimes you don't see you measure. Why that people travel the world? Why that people look more handsome, beautiful than me? Uh, so I have to, uh, you know, to change it to meet the standard. I just uh, uh, read a recent article talk about, you know, there's one young <coughs> lady, the country I shall not name, but went through about 20 operations just to, just to want to look like Angela Jolie. With, with uh, kind of the world, say, the sexy look and the lips and, and do all kind of, uh, you know, cha face so changing just to look like her. Hopefully, we'll have a life like her, which is, uh, by the way, divorce. And so a lot of people today looking for an icon, an idol, to live their life according to that. God has a better plan for you. God accept you and love you the way you are, regardless how the world tell you, handsome, beautiful. God loves you the way you are. Unless you got a, a bad accident, you know, uh, you know, need need some kind of a medical uh, intervention for plastic surgery. You don't need to do plastic surgery. I'm talking about, I just thought that only young girls today that want to do, but also guys this day also want. It was, it was a change in the generation, right? Today, plastic surgery business is, you know, is a booming, it's, it's, it's a very profitable business because they started very young, even teenager, 13, 15, 14. For those of you who are in, in, the, in the plastic surgery business, you know, Spare me, forgive me, all right? Uh, but uh, I, I need to speak the truth, and then, uh, you know, and then how you deal with it, that's up to you. But insecurity based on recent failure or rejection, you have to be aware of this. Because only you know. And of course, God knows. Number one, number two. The type number two is that... Can, oh, yeah. Lack of confidence because of social anxiety. Many of us experience a lack of confidence in social situations like party. Uh, I have some introvert friends say that they don't know what to do in the party. Or they go to party, they stay in the corner, everybody talk, and they seem everybody know each other, and they corner just for a while, and then they just kind of sneak out and went home, and they feel bad also because it deep in that deep inside that they want to connect. But it's just difficult to connect when you have that anxiety, when you have a, a social anxiety. People will freak out if they're in a big group, like over 10, over 20. Uh, they just want a one-on-one -on -one or small group. They, uh, they are afraid, even family gathering. <laughs> uh, they fear of being evaluated by others because perhaps maybe they have bad experience. When they visit, like those who are Vietna in Vietnam visit that, you know, especially younger, your mom and dad say, oh, when you get married? When are you going to get married? And then you feel like, oh no, every year I have to go this again. A lot of people tell me that this year they don't want to come home because mom, dad, uncle, all that. Yeah, when are when you going to have the, the, the card? When they have the wedding invitation? All of that. Or, you know, I'll say, oh, you look, you look okay. Why do you have a boyfriend and so on? And then the, the boy came home and so the mom say, where's your girlfriend? Where's your friend? You know? And, and then there's kind of pressure. And because you don't, want, you don't want to even, you know, associate with the people who, who try to, say, intimidate you. And, and, and there's a, it's a kind of a self-consciousness that, oh, people will evaluate me. I, if I tell them I have no job, they will evaluate me. Or I just do this job. Or actually all the, 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 the money, that they, especially students, all the money the family sent them to study here, they, they spent on different things and they, they dare not to ask the you know, parent money again. And so they feel that everybody is looking into my life and evaluate me according to what I do. Not necessarily that people do that, but they just have the projected idea in their mind that people will look down at them. So whenever somebody says something just so simple, 
You know, in Vietnam, for those of you who live in Vietnam or you're new here, the Vietnamese way of greeting you is say, Oh, long time no see. You look so fat. <laughs> I mean, it never happened in a Western culture, right? You don't say that, right? You have a different way to say it. But in Vietnam, say, Yeah, you look bald. Yes. Or you look skinny. Yes. You know. And, and, and they just being friendly. Being friendly. But... Uh, but, but, but that creates the, 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 the uh, whether it's a, a subconsciousness from the childhood, and then they just kind of say it out loud. And then, of course, they say, oh, no problem, no problem. But they went home, they feel bad, and they want to change something. Especially those who are looking, going for the fortune teller. And then, and then the fortune teller will tell you, oh, uh, this year uh, you are not going to have a boyfriend. Uh, unless you do certain thing. And then you feel insecure inside, you go home, or if I'm this, uh, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm the end, according to the zodiac, the, the Vietnamese, Chinese zodiac, or oh, I'm a pig, you know, and I look like a pig. So I will have to do something about And all the people, so when, I, when, when my son is young, when we visit the rat, they say, oh, what year is he? What animal is he? They, he's a human. He's not anymore. I said, no, no, no. The year that they're born, they say, I know. But I will not tell you, even I know. Because he is human made in the image of God. He is not a rat. He's not a pig. He's not a lion. He's not a goat. He's not a scorpion who moved to Western Zodiac. The Vietnamese get fed up with the, with the Chinese Zodiac, get the Western Zodiac. You got the sun, the scorpion, all of that. And every day they go to the, they, they go to the office, they play the whatever game. Oh, today, a good day. Maybe you ask somebody out and then you will get accepted. And they will act according to what they're told by the Zodiac. Many people subconsciously, they do that. Even they are Christian, if they are not strong Christian. The lack of confidence in social anxiety. They don't know how to connect and build relationship. All they need to do is just like, just be there but don't know how to talk. Because also a link with fatherless generation is the way they brought up their mom and their dad, don't talk to them. They don't know how to talk. So there is a growing teenager, in, at least in Vietnam I know, when they see the adult, they're just afraid. They don't want to get around because they have a picture of their mom and dad. They just want to get in their own room. So they find closer friends in their peers rather than with adults, which is they need the most because they need guidance. They need, they need to have a mentor, but usually they get comfortable with the peers. Uh, their peers only give only their peer reviews, which is sometimes is not helpful. Today, the generation growing up that the parents just want to push them away. There's a trend in Vietnam that a parent have a bit of money, send their kid early overseas, beginning like after secondary. So about year uh, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16. Because they think that, oh, they study be better English there, and they emerge into it. But what they don't know, and they miss the whole of their formation of their kids, will be dependent of course, the homestay that they chose. Hopefully, that good case that I know that will be a Christian home that they brought up to know Christ and they get a security. A security in Christ, not security in the family. But a lot of, of, of children being sent off today because the parents say, yeah, let me have my life. I don't want to be bothered with you. I have money. I sent you away early. So you take care. I sent money. I can carry on with my life. I still can go to party at night. I still can dress up and not busy with you. They didn't say that, but that's exactly what they hoped for. Send the kid away so that they can enjoy their life because they have money. Type number three. Type number three is insecure driven by perfectionism. Some of us have a very high standard of for everything we do. Hey, it's a good thing, but a good thing to do excellent, right? To do things excellent, but not perfect or in a way perfect perfectionism because it's kind of a, a symptom not good for your health. You may want to the highest grade, the best job, the perfect figure, the most beautiful, decorated apartment of a house, neat, polite kids, your ideal partner. Unfortunately, life doesn't, you know, turn out exactly the way you want. Even you work extra hard. You work 
16 hours a day doesn't change sometimes the reality. Uh, there's a, <clears throat> there is a, some of you, maybe you feel that you have a critical boss always criticize you because of one tiny mistake that you did. Then you feel insecure. Or you have a loving parents who correct you all the time. Why did you do this? Why did you do this? Why you cannot be like the other kids? Where well, they have grade A, they have A plus, and why you just have A? Why you just have A or B or C? Or you have a friend that always finds something that you are missing or you are not good at, at teasing at you, maybe childhood. Maybe today, politely, nobody do that, right? But you still have a pain in the past. Somebody keep putting salt into the wound that you already had in your childhood, in the trauma that you had. Insecure, driven by perfection. If you try so hard to earn your parents' approval, you try so hard to earn the boss compliment, right? Even you, you try your best, the boss is say, yeah, it's okay. Not really have affirmation or, 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 um, or compliment, just to say something that to lift you up. We all have the moment of insecure. For those who are married, the couple, you know, sometimes the husband, you know, never, you know, after the marriage, they never treat their wife like the, the time that they courtship or dating, you know. Oh, you're so beautiful. You are my everything. Right, after that, you know, and say, where's my food, you know, where's my food? And then you complain about this, complain about that, all of that. And, and uh, the, the wives also the other way, they never show respect before they get dating. Like, you know, like they just, they just think that the husband, you know, just, just, just do whatever they tell. And there's no mutual respect. There's no mutual affirmation. And that creates the insecurity. I got counsel, one marriage counsel, uh, um, the couple have an, an issue in marriage and uh, basically that, you know, the wife told me that, you know, I will do everything for him if you want to do plastic surgery. I looked young 20 years ago so that he's not running out after the girls. So the way to keep the guy in is to make herself sexy, lookable and all of that. That doesn't work. I said, that doesn't work. Because if he already loves other women, it doesn't matter if you have Angela Jolie at home, he still loves other women. Because the nature of sin, the nature of sin cannot be dealt with. It's like Peter just shared uh, that, you know, you cannot brush away by getting things other more attractive than this one. Because the nature of sin needs to be dealt with. And the only person can be deal with sin is that Jesus Christ. And he came to earth to be like you and me, to be human so that he can understand your emotional struggle, that he can understand your insecurity so it's of your security and my security. And he's perfect. None of us is perfect. So we're insecure because our, you know, driven by perfectionism, you're in a desperate need of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Are you still with me? Oh, well, that's just the introduction, as I told you. Right? We still have time, right? Let me time myself. That's the introduction, so I give myself maybe extra 20 minutes, okay? Okay. All right, I want to share with you, um, uh, here's the, just in case you know, you're a visitor. We all have problem. We all have issue. We all have sin. I'm not going to go out and buy a book and try to self-help myself because, like Peter just said, I cannot clean myself. So the solution usually find in someone, it's outside of me, outside of time, outside of this planet Earth. He is the creator. He is the savior. And give me a guidance. It's like the camera will not know what the function of camera. The creator will know. This button will take a next shot. That is the feature. So the camera needs to be told what his camera is. So you and I, what is human? And that's the Word of God required for us to, to know what is human. So here we look to the Scripture for, um, for uh, solution. Now I want to share you quickly this one. The protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. The advantage of knowledge is that um, wisdom preserves the life of him who has it. In this world, in this earth, 
planet Earth, you have money, you have some sort of protection, right? Uh, sometimes you, you know that if, you, if you're in Ho Chi Minh City, this is 20 years ago, if you want to open a business, a, a, a restaurant, you always need to pay protection, meaning you pay a group of mafia to protect you, uh, and then all you pay, you know, some of the, the gang there just to take care, you know, and protect you. And in life, we always think that we have money, that we have protection. It is true. But the Bible tells us knowledge and wisdom, it has better advantage. Same as money, but it gives you life, preserve your life. Your best money and best best on this life only can keep you as long as your body, body, your physical body can sustain. I don't know, 80 years, 90 years, 100, 120 is the Guinness record. Somebody said 121 and they cannot verify the ID. So 100, 120, 121, that's the max you and I say. Who can give you the eternal security? And wisdom preserve the life. So you want to know God, you need to read God's Word. For those who are Christian, wisdom, if you choose between you, this gift is a million dollar, and this one is wisdom of God, and you only can choose one. I don't know about you, but I will choose wisdom. That's what the, the richest king on the planet Earth during 2000 year, more than 2,000 years ago, King Solomon, that he asked for wisdom instead of money, richness, but he has both because the wisdom that he received from God that will bring his wealth as well. So here's the verse that I want to share with you. Uh, the son here in the context talk about Jesus Christ. The son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether throne or power or rulers or authority, all things have been created through Him and for Him. Just to kind of keep it simple for us, I bring it just to point number one, security. Security is that those who has authority over your life will give you security. So if you work in a company, the CEO, the boss, decided, or the human resources decided, this is how they're going to pay you. This gives you security in some sense, that because they have authority over you. They say that you have to work eight hours or ten hours, and I have to do this, and at the end of the month you have this, you have medical insurance, all of that. Because those, at least in the working hour, eight hours or ten hours, they have authority over your life in that period. And that's why they can give you some security. Who has the authority over your life and my life, ultimately? And that person can say that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and I'm the one who gives you life. And I became man to have, so that who trust in me will have life, not life only, but abundant life. And that one, if Jesus has no authority over your life, you and I have no security at all. That's why we can be Christian all year round, but we still feel insecure inside. We're always looking for something, but we don't know what is it. Because we are missing the ultimate authority in your life. If Jesus' word in the Bible has nothing to do with your life, has no power in your life, and not even give you instruction, if he says, say, forgive one another, and you don't do it, he has no authority over your life. That's why you feel insecure most of the time. Security. Who has authority over your life will give you security. I'm a pastor of this church. I have no authority over your life. You do whatever you want, how you dress, how you eat. I'm under the authority, meaning that God is my author of life. And He gave me authority to speak God's Word so that everyone can come to know Him and call Him Jesus, Lord, Savior. And He begin to have authority over the ones, those who believe in Him. Therefore, they receive security. Are you still with me? Number two, the verse I would like to share with you is that it's continued in the Colossians chapter 1. 
He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. And He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything He might have the supremacy. The supremacy. They say to one another, supremacy. The one who has supreme, have a supremacy over your life or is supreme over your life is the one who gives you sustenance or provision. I mean, just to give you a small scale, when the baby was, was in the home, infant, the, of course the parent is responsible to take care of the baby. And the parents will give the best to the baby for, whether milk form or food. But you will also witness in our world, the parents sometimes abandon the children. Not just even before give birth, that called abortion, that killing the human lives. Even after they gave birth, then certain law in the country allow to kill an infant in the hospital. They don't allow to kill in the womb, but they allow to kill in the hospital when they deliver. That's horrible. And then, of course, there's certain law allowed that people who want to have a legalized, commit, committed suicide, meaning like you decide that you want to die, you sign paper, then you can die. Because that person or the, whoever thinks that they have authority over their life and they supreme right, so they decide, my life comes to an end, I decided. And therefore, they don't want their life to be sustained. If Jesus is not supreme over your life, then you always worry about who will provide you, who will sustain you, especially in the pandemic. The number one question is that how is this going to be working? When the pandemic is going to end, how my industry is going to come to an end, I can lose my job, I cannot bring the bacon, the meat, the potato to my family, how can I, 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 I sustain my family? Those who are married, those who are single, I don't know if I can travel again. I, uh, some of you cannot visit your family right now, and you you just anxious and worry. And how even some of you are single and say, I cannot make enough money today to ask somebody to be my wife. I mean, the, by, the, oh, by the Vietnamese rural standard, you need to bring a couple cows, a couple pigs, and then a bit of gold, uh, no frankincense, right? Just a bit of gold uh, into a form of ring and to ask the, uh, the future wife to be your wife. And some of the, some of the guys today say, how are I going to find uh, two cows? How my bank account can sustain my life with my future spouse? They all have that concern because they think they are supreme over their life. That's why they have the insecurity. I decide for my life. This is how my life runs. This is what I need. This is what I want. I am the supreme. Even though they said they're Christian, but they said I am the boss of my life. And they bought into the popular culture textbook and say that you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You're the boss of your life. You decide for yourself. You be good. You have to do it. You can do it. Everybody, everybody want to become a um, uh, uh, Bill Gates. Everybody want to become Steve Jobs. And, and those who follow, uh, you know, Bill get advice. Oh, you don't need to sleep eight hours. You just sleep two hours like me. It's good. I will be able to. And there are a lot of people try and they got into all the medical health. And a lot of, of students, I, at some, at some students I talked to, they left university because, Bill, you know, Steve Jobs left the university. So they said, oh, mom, I don't need your university degree. I'm going to do this. And they fail, start up second, third one, fourth one, and they feel insecure inside who is supreme over your life will give you the ultimate sustenance and provision. If that, not, if that is not God, then you always worry. You always be anxious. The bird in the air, even more happier than you, flying out, you know, singing beautiful songs, chirping, calling in the morning, looking for the worms, and then just eat and be content and satisfied, build the nest. And less worry. The Bible tells us that why you're so worry? The pagan, the not yet believing people that worry every day. But you have your father. Even you are more important than the bird. And yet, you are still worrying every day. Because you cannot have or gain or receive security. Because you think you are the supreme 
judge. You think you are supreme over your life. You have control over your life. No, none of us has. I don't know what happened next few hours. I know there's a program, but I don't know exactly how it happened. But I trust the one who sustained my life because he's supreme over my life. Are you still with me? Number three. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. I want to focus us, bring us our attention to the word peace. A lot of you may have everything you need in life, maybe the job, the clothes you wear, the food to the table. And I, I heard many times, sometimes <clears throat> people do not have peace with their parents, not peace with their loved one, because they always try so hard to seek the loved one's the loved one approval, acceptance. I still remember vividly their CEO, successful CEO. And came, talked to me and said that, you know, I'm every day I hand, handling millions and millions of dollars, but I never be able to handle my situation when I reach home because my mom always, you know, pick it on me. And I always have to prepare myself to seek to, to uh, her approval, her love, her acceptance. A lot of kids today, born in a silver spoon, but they're absolutely insecure. They're secure, insecure in their relationship. They're insecure in even to build relationship because they're hurt in the past. Whose love, approval, acceptance are you seeking? For those who are married couple, for husband, I speak to husband now, if every day that you are just simply seeking the respect of your wife or love or wife. Sometimes you feel insecure. And that's how men just want to keep silent. They get tired of it. This is why in the generation to come, men will keep quiet, will keep silent because they had enough. Because they never receive the due respect from their wives and spouse. In the other hand, the wife is supposed to have sufficient love from the husband because the Bible says, love your wife. They always worry, is my husband still look me the same and love me the same the way that, you know, when we first got married or he's wandering his eye on the internet looking for pornography, looking for dating sites, Flirting with some chat group. I didn't know until recently that there's a whole so-called dance of lion over all the social uh, media, even chat, because sometimes the husband got trapped in. And, and, and okay, by the way, the local news said that, you know, some guy got really cheated, you know, lost a billion dong because trusting someone online and, and you know, flirting and then, you know, with the beautiful picture, but all fake. All, all the picture is Photoshop. And uh, he lost money, lost family because of his lust, his sin. There's no peace in that relationship. If husband, you feel that, uh, if wife, you feel that, you know, you just try so hard to keep your husband home, try this method, read that method, I will tell you, unless he knows Jesus Christ, unless he have relationship with Jesus Christ, there will be no peace at home. You're always looking for his acceptance. You're always looking for his approval. You're always looking for his love. But Christ should be the ultimate lover. He loves you. He loves you and me. And there will be peace. There will be, no, there will be no peace if there is no security. We need to find security in Jesus Christ. We need to know that He's the one that gives us ultimate security because He has authority over our life. 
we need to know that He's the one who sustained us. The Israelite in the wilderness, the only thing that literally they have is the manna. Not even they can make themselves. It's coming from the heaven. It's a miracle. Today we don't have that kind of manna. But because why? Because the fulfillment has been done to Jesus Christ. If you and I have Jesus Christ, that He will provide. Yes, we have to go to work. But we're not anxious. We're not worried. We're not panicking. We're not frantically searching that we say, oh, we're going to die, we're going to die, we're going to die. Not like that. But we just do our work. Whatever work may come, we can sustain, we can change our lifestyle, and God will provide for us because He ultimate sustainer. Even you have a dollar today, for guys, even you have a dollar today, I can tell you, you still can get married. Because you will look for the wife that don't even need a dollar from you, but need the heart of Jesus Christ. If those ladies look for the penny, a dollar, a million dollar check, you shouldn't marry her. The same way for the guys. The wives, the young ladies, you need to look for the man, not just about his ability to boast to become a, a rich man, but his humility to become Christ-like. Even he has a penny. There will be peace for you and the Lord. There will be peace for both of you. Even you decided to get married soon. For those who are single, for those who are Married, you think that oh, I'm kind of kind of my my children gonna match what with other you know friend. They go to this Ivy League university, all of that. Uh, how can I can make up that? Don't worry, because life is not about all of that mirage, all of that illusion. It's about Jesus Christ. Unless you and I establish peace relationship with Jesus Christ, there will be no peace. We all running along. Seeking our boss approval, seeking our loved one loves, seeking our friends and spouse acceptance, and we always feel insecure. Christmas comes so that you and I can be secure in Christ. Amen. Let's just spend about five minutes for time of reflection uh, for those who are. Visitor, after these five uh, minutes, uh, we're going to uh, wrap up with a song and then we're going to have some, um, some games together and then the caterer and other team will pack up chairs and then uh, so that uh, we can have lunch so that you don't think that, you know, we're wrapping up, you have to go. So stay with us and let's just uh, spend five minutes of reflection.
Lord Jesus, if you are real, Lord, speak directly to those who are searching for the meaning of life and the purpose of life. And we know by faith that you are real. But Lord, you are the living God that speaks directly to those hearts that are longing and seeking for the Father love. And those who spend their life to, to seek to make their mom and their parents happy by having good jobs, sent money home, and in fact, are seeking approval of their parents, perhaps, Lord, today I pray that, Lord, you, Jesus, is the one that people know for sure. And they don't even need to seek your approval because you accepted us already to the birth of Christ and the death of of your son at the cross and the resurrection alive and the ascension you 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 went ahead before us to prepare and you said that you will come back to bring us what a beautiful relationship it's not a religion that we are living that's why those who are religious people all the more feel insecure because they think religion can bring them security it's not religion it is jesus christ and Lord, may this season, it's just the beginning of our journey that to explore who is the ultimate authority over our life and therefore the source of our security. And Lord, over this season, that we all need sustenance. We all need food, water, air. Sometimes we don't know who to thank to. Sometimes we just thank ourselves. Are we making the air? You are the creator. You create the air that we breathe. Thank you, Lord, for the air. You are the creator of all the planet Earth and vegetable and animals, all of that. We are thank you for the food. Because we like the bird, we don't need to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow take care of itself. It's not that we need to, we, it's that we, you encourage to live a reckless life, but live a careful life, but not to worry about tomorrow. And Lord, the world can promote peace through shopping, to beautify yourself, ourselves, to make the, the outside, the appearance become a security. Lord, what, who, who can give us the security inside? And Lord, there will be no peace on this planet that you have came and become one of us. You sympathize, you empathize, and you journey with us. May, may the peace that all of us know already intensify and magnify. And those who are seeking for peace, Lord, may you reveal yourself to them. May you get to may them, may they get to know you. And Lord, and they may be asking the right question: what is truth? What is this life is all about? We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be friend to them, to be friend to one another. And to have this fellowship, relationship that in you is not about being religious, but about relational. We thank you, Lord, for uh, you are the Lord of all, the Savior of the world. And I pray for my friend here, though we have not yet known you, may they explore and begin to ask the right question. We thank you, Lord, for their friendship. We thank you, Lord relationship that we have with them we thank you for everything you have been doing in the history of mankind up until this year 2020 you are still god over all creation you are the head of all creation the head of the church you are the firstborn of all creation you're firstborn of the dead because you rose from the dead you conquer that that's why you are the firstborn of everything you are the top, top, top president and the boss of this universe. And you are the ultimate creator, savior. And you're the God of all God, the Lord of all lords. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be in relationship with you. Many of us dream to meet the president or some VIP. And you are here with us in a simple way, 
in a humble way as we look back to see the picture of a manger, a Jesus baby. We look at that photograph. We look at that picture. We look at that event. We look at that video. We can relate at the present that you are alive today. And Lord, I pray that those who are seeking you can see Jesus Christ in each and every one of us here and begin to build relationship. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.